scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation. Prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4, just two verses after what we just, where we just read, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it. Edify it. The word edify is an architectural term. You build yourself. You build capacity in the spirit. Remember the Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, it is that your strength, capacity is small. So you build capacity in the spirit when you pray. He that prays edifies himself. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer. Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Luke chapter 9. The Bible says, And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. Verse 29. The Bible says, And as he prayed, watch transformation. Two things happened. One, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. There is a dimension of beauty and glory. You evolve, it's like, it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray. I am telling you this works. You can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself. Growth and transformation. Bring for me a weak believer, timid, completely ignorant, but with the heart that is bent on prayer, I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later. Let one day become one week, become one month, become one year, become three years, become five years, and I show you a sign and a wonder. Was it not Paul himself that says, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all. Are we together? I hope God is blessing us. Say amen. amen. It's very important that we pray. Growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray. Now you see, for many believers, prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving, not transformation. The primary assignment of prayer, I'll be teaching as, as we proceed in the series, the primary assignment of prayer, believe me, is not for breakthroughs, for miracles, etc. No, most of the breakthroughs that we need, we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom. Remember the Bible says when you are praying, pray that your kingdom come. Because when his kingdom comes, there are many things you will not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom. Most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of God's mercy correcting our ignorance. So if you understand the kingdom and the ways of God, your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth, not just petitions. 
because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for God and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made you're praying you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer I'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that church that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness are we together let's hurry up we have to pray Jude 1 Jude has only one chapter verse 20 the Bible again talks about prayer it says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost so prayer builds up there are many ways that prayer builds up it builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit so when you begin to pray what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated you can know then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit where you can know things even though your eyes may not see angels but you can know they are here and at first when you start in the school of prayer it will look like you are lying but the accuracy and the predictability of your results will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie you will know you will perceive danger prayer is powerful it brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms you are human yet you are spiritual you can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real wickedness is real the devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us meaning if you fold your hands and let him be he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you 
but there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ and through this mystery we call warfare and intercession we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now warfare and intercession is very powerful James chapter 5 and verse 13 Apostle James now is teaching us James 5 and verse 13 the Bible says is any among you afflicted buffeted is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children your life your career your business don't explain it away using science or sociology it says the moment you find affliction the solution is let him pray we do every other thing but prayer we discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation and yet we do not pray is any among you afflicted he says let him pray for time's sake we may not read on but when you read down to 18 it uses Elijah it personifies an individual called Elijah that he was a man of like passions but he took the tool of prayer and literally stopped rain physically not a parable over a territory let me tell you this Elijah was not the only one who believed in the God of the Bible and I'm sure there were people who said God don't mind him we command rain to come and yet rain did not come because a man had authority to prayer and God respected his authority regardless what you were saying that day you will keep talking if Elijah did not speak rain would not come may God give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say this year you all rise and go to bed it doesn't matter who is talking after you he spoke too late you have declared let all the enchantments and all the divination speak not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say what are they saying now no Elijah's authority when he declared it he said I know God he went to bed there were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and say what an arrogant man God bring rain to show this man he's not the only one and God said no he doesn't work like that when you ascend in this spirit and you have authority you will do wonders with it he prayed for a space of three and a half years there was no rain and then to show you it was not luck he went again and did the same thing and rain came hallelujah warfare and intercession it was on the strength of prayer in Acts chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 to 17 the Bible says Peter was bound hand and feet in chains they were preparing to kill him but the Bible says verse 5 that Peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing that's Paul's encouragement now of the church unto God for him believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful they began to engage the realm of the spirit suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came the angel was always available Peter would have died without that angel coming and yet the angel was available somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels the Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see that the Word of God is never called a lie in your life that's the assignment of angels they are enforcers that means when there is nothing happening from your end they keep loitering around did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit a prayerless believer does not have angelic activities what are they doing when Satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities he was once there so he knows uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing they are coming in response when Jacob slept in chapter 28 of Genesis when he slept 
the Bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending the Bible never said they were coming to him he only saw them walking they were going to those who were calling their ministry that was why he said the Lord was here these angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me there's no record of any angel bringing anything to him yet they were ascending and descending angels can be in your compound they can be in your vicinity they can be in your office ascending and descending bringing testimonies for those who are praying do not make the mistake of Jacob Jacob said the Lord was in this place I had a chance for my lifting I had a chance for my rising but but according to the law of the will it will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do I want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens angels don't come because you are a Christian they come because there is a demand Jesus kept speaking he sent prayer to his future after three days I will rise it was not an information after three days I will rise when it was the third day God said you had the prayer an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it let me tell you if Jesus kept quiet and never said anything he would have been surprised what will happen after three days the body would not decay but you will not come out either let the redeemed of the Lord say so Believe what I'm teaching you is why many people do not rise. They come under strong influence of angelic activities, but they are silent. Do you not know that this is how the spirit of depression works? The assignment of the spirit of depression is to use obstacles to reduce you to a point of silence. Balaam caused these people and Balaam said, I tried, but there is the shout of the king in the midst of them these are the mysteries that give us power and dominion in this kingdom when you pray there are tools of warfare you don't fight you only activate the laws that make warfare to be a reality so what we call warfare is not you fighting what we call warfare is you authorizing the host of heaven angel armies my brothers and my sisters you do not one angel two angels use hailstone is it in your bible when an angel stones you will you be alive look at the bible these things were not parables they actually The angel appeared and told Joshua, Joshua removed his sword. Do you know why he removed his sword? Because God gave him a word. No man will be able to stand against you. So when the angel came, he said, who are you? And the angel had to answer because the word of God was in, on him. If that angel kept quiet, he would have been surprised. It was not the knife. Joshua said, God told me something. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 hold on. It is true. Believe what I'm telling you. Don't play with what God has told you. You can take it to battle. Oh, he told me that in 2021 I am victorious. Oh yes, I believe it. This is not some Pentecostal jargon. It is true. Please sit down. What then is the basis of our confidence if this is not true? Before Satan attacks you, let me tell you what happens. Satan is every other thing but a fool. Before he attacks you, he will research what you know and what you don't know. He will bring it together and build the strategy to attack you. He does not attack randomly. Satan examines. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about agreement? What do you know about prophetic connection? Oh, he doesn't know so much here. What do you know about giving? So he brings it. What strategy can we develop? What are the loopholes in his spiritual life? That becomes the basis for the strategy. Is why Satan is almost accurate when he strikes. Because he does not shadow box. 
he uses your knowledge and your ignorance puts them together and build the strategy for your attack if you are satan will you like me Verse 5. Oh, number 5. Number 5. We have to finish. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is now the platform to make our requests, our requests, our petitions known. Oh no, let's, I made a mistake, that's, that's point six. Let's go to five. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. The fifth point, please correct it. Prayer is a strategy for living faith. When you want your faith to be alive and living. Luke 22, two verses quickly. Verse 30 and 32. Prop Luke 22. From verse 30 to 32 that he may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel 31 and the Lord said now watch this remember the first time Satan came to Jesus after the temptation in Matthew chapter 4 he came to him it is written it is written Satan left for a season the next time he would come he did not come directly again he came through Peter are we together now and he used Peter's compassion to try to say something that will stop Jesus from going to the cross and Jesus discerning he said mm -mm. Simon Simon behold Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat 32 what was the remedy but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when you are converted anytime you see people doubting what god has said suddenly on sunday you were believing but on tuesday it's like you're saying look this thing is like wisdom is profiting to the right he said use this same formula to convert them tell them an attack is happening what suddenly happened that last week you are full of faith but right now it looks like you are just saying well, one day go better the wise saying that the devil uses to deceive us when your faith fails, your convictions begin to dwindle. The classic character of faith is found in Romans chapter 4 when you read. He uses Abraham and Sarah as a portrait that he wavered not at his faith through unbelief. He counted God faithful. When you pray in the spirit, it truly keeps your faith alive. Because how many of you have gone to a place of prayer? You went doubting and you kept praying and suddenly it's like a generator. All of a sudden courage, you know that this is doable. You even ask God, forgive me for the kind of unbelief I used to come to pray. Now my heart is alive again. And then number six. And we'll wrap it up for tonight. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is a platform to make requests and petitions. Are you saying that for most believers, this is the only one we know? Requests and petitions. And yet, that is just number six. Mark 11 and verse 23 and 24. Mark 11, 23, 24. Jesus caused the fig tree. The next day it was caused and the disciples were surprised. And he used the opportunity to teach them something about faith. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. The law is in verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, he says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. It is in the place of prayer we receive. And you can never have what you have not received there are two different things receiving and having is different receiving is spiritual having is the manifestation if you have not received it in the realm of the spirit you will never have it physically 
and that happens in the place of prayer Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 a platform to table our requests and our petitions the Bible says be careful King James says careful but it's not an accurate translation the real translation there the root word there is anxiety be anxious he says for nothing right it says but in everything so there is nothing there is no aspect of your life but prayer cannot be involved in it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here's the instruction let your request be made known don't assume God knows it he says make your request known King James says make your request known and how do you know God has answered that prayer verse 7 hallelujah and the peace of God if you have truly made your request known you can know that your request has reached heaven because suddenly the peace of God in a way that surpasses all understanding will keep the word keep there is garrison it will build a defense around your heart so that all the troubles that come and make your faith to vacillate the peace of God like a strong wall hallelujah where's Dave you sing that your song again just prepare very beautiful powerful song praise the name of the Lord as we prepare to wrap up final scripture for tonight James 4 from verse 2 and 3 James 4 the Bible says in fact let's start from verse 1 to 3 James 4 it says from whence cometh wars and fighting oh dear I wish I had time to walk this Apostle James is a very intelligent Apostle he's tracing the root of many people's problems he's saying from whence comes wars and fighting among you do they not come because of disappointed expectations there are secret desires that you have you want to rise you want to be successful you want to make progress you want your ministry to blossom you want business to move forward and it is human it says that the lost that war in your members verse 2 it says ye lost that means you have even an ungodly desire and affinity and you have not you even go to the extent of killing all desiring to have and you cannot obtain you cause quarrel and fight and war yet you have not and the simple reason not knowing that everyone can have a great destiny in Christ are you seeing what James is tracing now James is tracing for us the root of bitterness and hatred among family members maybe respectfully speaking among ministers in our society among politicians he's saying if you know what prayer can do you will never envy anybody because everything you ever see there is a way of getting it to another person's testimony is not why you are suffering this is what James is trying to correct simply because you do not know how to ask look at the side effect of not being equipped with that level of knowledge and then verse 3 it says ye ask and you receive not because you ask and miss are you seeing now so he's not talking about prayerlessness he's talking about inaccuracy in understanding how to ask and receive that he may consume it upon your lusts petitions can be made listen God did not leave us in this kingdom defenseless this our world is a wicked world and if God were to leave us to ourselves defenseless we may not be able to rise only God knows the kind of attacks per day per season that come upon families that come upon men of God some of you are politicians if God opens your eyes to see the number of people who try to invoke spirits day and night that you go down there are families just because God is helping you you do not know how many people is fallacy to believe that everyone is clapping for you and yet the Bible says cheer up find comfort you can still excel in this world because you are not alone heaven has a way of coming into partnership with you to make you invincible and to make your life a sign and a wonder that when all the stakes are down 
you are still standing in that family and they say by what means your grandfather could not stand and you tell them i learned that prayer is partnership with heaven i can draw strength i do not have i can draw wisdom i do not have let me wrap up tonight by teaching you something the highest proof of humility is prayer prayerlessness is not just sin it is pride when you do not pray it is proof that you are sufficient in yourself it, you, prayerlessness is a statement you are making to god that i have vetted you oh god and i have not found anything in you that i do not have i don't need you when we pray it is proof of humility it is an acknowledgement that we are limited in ourselves and we call for support and we call for help even the military when they go for war they have a system of asking for reinforcement when it looks like the battle is raging then they have a way of calling and the command releases more soldiers I have stood face to face with situations in my life that I knew that only prayer could come in many of you have stood face to face with situations legal situations political situations health situations when you stand before life's challenges and situations sometimes you may need to drop your intellect sometimes you may need to drop studies and call with all humility even jesus at the height of his pain at the cross he did not keep quiet eloi eloi lamak sabachthani father if you now turn your face from me then i know that i'm truly defenseless and the father turned it away because he was looking at man the lord is nigh them that call upon him listen to me you can use the instrument of prayer to bring god down to your life and he stands by you like a mighty terrible one you may be weak right now seated here listen to me some of you are in ministry and you are asking apostle where will i get church land where will i even get the money for it some of you are fathers already plunging into depression because the pandemic brought so much debt you are in a situation when you go to pray you just sit down and cry i bring you words of comfort god is not evil to leave you alone it is our pride that keeps driving the help of God away from us. My Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Then he asks a question. He said, from whence cometh my help? I don't know about you, but my help. My assistance. Ah, I may look weak, oh warm Jacob. As weak as you are. As defenseless as you are. But let the jealousy of God be introduced to your life. And you will watch your life rise in a way that will first surprise you the recipient of that kindness the hymn writer says how did he put it now he says oh what needless pain we bear he says all because we could not carry everything you know i thank god for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to work in miracle signs and wonders and sometimes when I have the opportunity to minister to people, I am almost tempted to ask them, why did you allow it to get this long? Did you not know that God is that mighty? Did you not know that God is able to lift? Why did you allow the issue of your house rent to go so bad? Why did you allow your health to deteriorate? Why didn't you run to God? The prodigal son kept being proud. No, I won't go to my father. I don't want shame and the more he stayed there doing bold face the more he kept going down until he became like one of the peaks but one day he came to himself he said how many hired servants that's the voice of humility you know many times we want to take credit for everything in our lives joshua selman is a doer and god says in this kingdom owners are rebels if you can step back and say lord you made me father over this family but the bills are killing me i step back and i allow abba to take his place
this political office i am tired of the persecutions that come here and if i leave it to myself one day they will kill me for nothing someone can give you a cup of tea that is full of poison and i know you think you avoid it but you, your memory can fail you one day hunger and test will make you finish drinking it first but you can still find comfort it is not only when you avoid evil that you are free there are times that the fire has no power over you the three hebrew boys men who the fire had no power it is not only avoidance that brings victory there are times you can walk through the fire isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not he says i am with you i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine and then he says verse 2 when thou passest through water i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you he says when thou walkest through fire you shall not be burnt neither shall the flame kindle upon you business people hear me i know that many of you here are veterans of business i don't mean to insult your pedigree but you have done so much just with human connection why don't you resort with humility to invite divine assistance that in addition to this some of you are professionals in your place of work why don't you employ the hand of god i am very quick to step back and say lord if you leave me to myself how many things do i know don't leave me at the mercy of my ignorance i am learning slowly but the demands are faster than my rate of learning can you come and stand by me as a mighty terrible god bow your heads in prayer in one minute everyone we're praying we just have five minutes and we're done for tonight's service please be patient don't be distracted everyone all the overflows outside following online while speaking the holy ghost is speaking to you and telling you you need to lay aside that burden you are carrying loads jesus said my my yoke is easy this family burden will kill you for nothing sir this political burden may frustrate you to a point that it may injure you the demands on your business you are probably owing millions and billions in corporate debt it will take more than just finding solutions by the arm of flesh some of you are dealing with loved ones with terminal diseases some of you are in ministry you have exhausted all you know as far as church growth is concerned we were not left defenseless everyone talk to the lord your maker the bible says to come boldly before him it's time for us to walk in victory And you're not just praying this for yourself alone you are praying for others too because through you like the vidam sang that god can flow through you to bless others everyone please pray we have just two minutes and we're done Ooh, are you praying quickly Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Someone is praying. Whatever you oh, I am well able. I am well able. I am not the weak believer Lord, under situations and circumstances. He stands by me as a mighty, terrible one. To change. You can change things through prayer. That family should not remain like that. That financial situation does not have to remain like that. Man of God, your strength is limited. You can outsource intelligence. You can outsource power from a dimension that is not human. Business people.
pray, pray. Let the song inspire you while you pray. The power of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Visitations for my family. New levels in the spirit. Whoever you want to touch, Lord, you can touch through me. Whatever you want to bring, Lord, you can bring through me. Whatever you want to build, Lord, you can build through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Prayer can change your husband, madam. I assure you, prayer can change your wife. Prayer can change your children. You may have taken them to rehab. Why don't you try the power of prayer? Call upon the God of heaven who is able to change. We have one more minute. Someone talk to God about your job. Someone talk to God about your position. Talk to God about that which stops you from sleeping. The keeper of Israel, the Bible says, he does not sleep nor slumber. Listen, please look at me. We're out of time. We have to end for tonight. But as always, we are committed to the global harvest. There are people that the Lord brought here tonight. Many who are following from the US, UK, Asia, the Caribbeans. Whilst under the influence of this word, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Many of you, you are here, seated, the balconies, all of the overflows right down to the basement, outside. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that it's time to make it right with Jesus. Such an honor to be used by Him to save. As we sing, I'd like you to leave your seat very quickly. There are others who are saying, Apostle, standing here, I'm hearing the word of the Lord. It's time for me to be a serious Christian. I'm tired of playing games with my destiny. As I leave this song singing, I want you to run and come. Stand here. All of you who are at the overflows just you would just run to your projector screens and stand there those online you would connect by faith and pray the prayer whoever you want to save lord you can save through me keep coming whoever you want to change lord you can change Whoever you want to live, Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. I'm counting five. Run to Jesus. Don't sit back thinking, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm embarrassed. I want to come but I'm not sure I came with my family members how do I come uh, I'm, I'm shy no this is not a funeral service 
the greatest gift that you can be given is the gift of Jesus this is not religion this is not church this is an experience to start a journey with God that gives you peace with God that your children and your children's children will benefit from don't be so selfish that you sit back and allow those connected to you to suffer because you have refused to give up on your pride are you coming keep coming whoever you want to change lord you can change through me whoever you want to live lord you can live through me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears listen to me the call to jesus it's not some altar call for weak people to come and stand it takes a lot of courage that you are standing here is proof that you are strong that you are standing here is proof that you are selfless because salvation is not just for you alone come to jesus our time is gone but come to jesus we are not playing religion here jesus is a big deal for your life after now and the excelling of your destiny here and now god bless you god bless you now look at me all of you who are standing here i salute you thank you so much for the courage some of you are crying i salute you for the courage to stand the bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away everybody who means business with god will must at a point in his life answer this call refusing this call is pride don't run away from an opportunity to come to jesus who else can help you i'm going to lead you to pray this prayer number of you are rededicating your lives some of you are making this decision for the first time it doesn't matter what category i'd like you to lift your right hand in surrender and total submission to jesus who is here in our midst more than joshua selman beyond him the christ of god is here and i'd like you to say after me say it sincerely acknowledging that jesus is here say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus I love you with all my heart those following online join the prayer tonight I have heard your word I declare that I am unable to help myself so I come to you the author and the finisher of my faith I receive forgiveness of sin I receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness i declare that from today the power of sin the power of satan the power of the grave is broken over my life i begin a new journey with the lord jesus christ no condemnation no voice speaks against me I am a new person from today i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted jesus as always we present to you the ones you died for thank you for giving them the boldness and the courage by the spirit to publicly make this decision by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that you start a new journey with god I commend you all to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit and I pray that step after step he will build you to be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ everything that stands against your liberty in Christ I come against it right now I declare that you walk free of every guilt and every condemnation the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your mind in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now look at me my dear brothers and sisters thank you for making this great decision there's someone waving 
the placard there, one of the counselors. Please, all of you, just follow them. Just a few minutes, they'll have your details, pray with you, and you'll be back to your seat. Please, let's celebrate them, everyone. Don't be tired, let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, just two things very quickly. I apologize. We have to, um, we have to wrap up, but let me have the honor and the privilege of acknowledging the head of service of the Federation and her family. Please, let's honor them. Madam, thank you. Can you just wave your hands to us, ma'am? Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. It's an honor. Thank you. We never take it for granted. And then, quite a surprise, my brother, uh, I was preaching in the heat of the sermon. I just spotted him, a consultant gynecologist, all the way from Meduguri, Dr. Joseph Innocent. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated, sir. Thank you. Such an honor. And for every one of you, I love and honor you. We sincerely celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the last Sunday of this month, um, that would be our first miracle service here in Abuja. For, for those of you who have not tasted of what the miracle service looks like, you are welcome to experience something that you will not recover from in a lifetime. Please, when we invite people, it's not to increase the church of a man of God. It is proof of love that we know that there are people in need of the power, the glory, and the grace of God. And by the grace of God, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi will be with us. And it will be a wonderful time in the spirit. Praise the Lord. There are other guest artists coming up before him. But just to let you know that God is doing a great thing. Please do not come to church alone. Pay the price to come with as many. And for your loved ones who... Listen, please. For your loved ones who are not domiciled in Abuja here and may not make it physically, I'd like you to do well to inform them. They can connect the online the media space has given us an opportunity. There's no excuse as far as connecting to grow and to be built is concerned. Have you been blessed tonight? The Lord bless you. Please rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I declare over your life this week beginning is a week of victory for you in the mighty name of Jesus may your spiritual life receive such an acceleration this week your hunger and your passion for the things of the spirit will never go down and because you have believed I pray for you all through this week from Monday till Sunday experience the miraculous every day in the name of Jesus Christ, every source of pain, every source of stress, I declare that it rolls out of your life like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not have to tell people you came for koinonia. The mark of grace upon your life and the testament of the hand of God will be evidence that you met with the king. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and see you next Sunday. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.